I had a vision years ago that I had five wives. You told me that you are no longer on a dating site, but I can see that you are still. Scientifically, when a man and a woman become one, the sperm goes in a woman, that his DNA becomes part of her. Oh, that's what the Spice Girls were talking about. I need some love like I never needed love before. The show about polygamists looking for more sister wives has gone full wackadoodle. The Davises won't let a naive 22 year old go. The Ryans are hitting on random ladies at bars, just wishing on a prayer that any breathing woman will let Justin touch her. Oh, and Garrett Merrifield is out here sexualizing Bible verses, saying every time the Holy Ghost fills you, that's actually God orgasming. It's like, not gonna aim in that. The guy's a creep, but worse, he's a loser creep. I mean, Garrick and Danielle totally suck at being cult leaders. They can't get a single sister wife to stay. It's so embarrassing, but also thank God. I mean, I would feel sorry for any poor Brazilian woman that somehow ended up trapped in the middle of the forest in Colorado with Danielle and porn star Joel Osteen, but more about Dollar Tree Rainier later. Season five kicks off with our favorites, the Davis family, who have recently added a third wife and new baby to the mix. We get a quick repeat segment that we already saw in past seasons. It's the one where Nick talks about being a stay-at-home dad and having all the women work so that he can give his valuable contributions of thinking and reading. We have enough people dedicated towards earning wages. We need more people here thinking and feeling. I mean, like, please let me wake up tomorrow with freaking Nick Davis's confidence. Like, <laughs> hold on a sec. I just had a thought. You're welcome. You're welcome. I want that confidence. The Davises start a couch talk on how many more wives they'll be adding in the future. I ideally would want at least four, uh, maybe five. April's like, I'm seeing a 33 foot bed in our future. Obviously we'd have to knock every wall in the house down. Just bulldoze the whole thing, start over. Start with the bed first, build the house around the bed. The bed that I wanted to get us, the bed is 12 feet wide. That's the biggest bed you can buy. Danielle's not quite on the same page. Um, it's kind of hard to picture like someone being with us that is compatible. I just don't know if I'm ready for that, so. And yeah, I was like, wait, is it, is this a sex cult? Is, no, is this a sex cult? No, seriously guys, am I in a sex cult right now? This is going to be the main plot line for the Davises in the foreseeable future. Danielle not really being on board with adding more wives into the family and whether she'll stick around. At the end of episode two, Danielle actually moves out. And April and Stephanie are like, Whoa. like <laughs> we just got this big new house. Uh, <laughs> who's gonna help us pay for the mortgage? But then in episode three, it is revealed that Danielle has gone back to the Davises. Honestly, to me, this is a young person who just very clearly is not sure about what the right thing to do in her life is right now. The second family we meet in season five is a new family, Ashley and Shane Sherwood. If you're a monogamous person, that's fine. But for some people, it's just not the right fit. They are a couple who met through competitive axe throwing, which I always get jealous of any modern couple that met through anything that isn't a dating app. Like, oh my God, you met at a Chili's? How romantic. I spotted my wife for the first time when I was on the toilet, scrolling on my phone. Like, oh yeah, she's hot. One fun fact about the Sherwoods is they are dating while Ashley is pregnant. Because why let a little tiny future baby deter your dreams? Throw that newborn baby right into an ocean of emotional instability. If you're out on the road, all you have to do is come and make me. I will follow. At first, I was very confused about the dynamics between Ashley and Shane. And then when Ashley tells us she's a bisexual who's never explored her feelings for women before, I'm like, 
Oh, oh, okay. I get it. I get it. This is a bi woman who wants to explore lady loving lady activities. And her husband was like, yeah, okay, I'm cool with it. We watched the Sherwoods meet up with a woman named Grace, who Ashley has been dating alone. I'm a coach in the personal development field, and I help other spiritual entrepreneurs learn to cultivate peace internally. I had a dream last night. I dreamt I was a dove flying over the sea. And this meetup, again, reinforces my opinion because it is very clear. Grace has no interest whatsoever in being in a plural marriage with Shane or even being in the same room as Shane. Like, Shane could walk up to her on fire and she would light her cigarette and then walk away like... So you understand what therapy is, yeah? Yeah. Okay. But that's okay, your I'm problem. Sorry. Have you been to a therapist you. before? I have not. Okay, that shows. <laughs> Uh, this woman had no uh, plans whatsoever to include Shane in her future life. In episode four, we actually meet a woman that Ashley is interested in after Ashley has dumped Grace. This woman is named Sarah. So let me give you some help, girls. Uh, if you're gonna have a date in the middle of the afternoon, in a public place, like put a little effort in, you know? Bring a picnic basket, plan it out, bring a blanket so that you can relax and oh my God, like maybe have a chance of, maybe you might graze the other person's skin, but like these two sitting on a bench in the after, it looks like a cop meeting with their undercover agent. Uh, it's giving two coworkers discussing their deadline for their upcoming project. Like just like a little more romance, ladies. Ashley goes home to tell Shane about the date she just had, and Shane brings up the pregnancy issue. How did she feel about you being pregnant now? Um, she didn't seem to have any hesitation about it or anything. She's been through it. So I think that's important. Ashley's like, am I pregnant? Are you sure I'm pregnant? I think I would know. Yes, ma'am. You've got a baby on the way and like 47 dogs to take care of. My nose was chiseled by the gods themselves. My body was sculpted to the proportions of Michelangelo's David. Your only chance is to leave with us. Of course, the most talked about couple on the show is the Merrifields. I tell you, it's a little bit younger. I really feel like God promised our family more than just Danielle. I had a vision years ago that I had five wives. Me see that They start us off in confessional with Danielle telling us, we have been practicing polygamy for five years now. Girl, no you have not. You have been practicing real the fishing. You've dated a lot. You gave us a whole season of 90 Day Fiance and it was good. Let me tell you, that reaction to Roberta's breakup text, that was. <laughs> up his culty vibes this season. A lot of the scriptures, the terms where it says he fills you with the Holy Ghost, it's actually a sexual term. Do I lie to myself to be happy? Yes, I will. And even scientifically, we found that when a man and a woman become one and his sperm goes in the woman, that his DNA becomes part of her. It actually goes into her brain and she becomes one with him, but yet the woman can't. Eliza, I'm looking for a mind at work. I'm looking for a mind at work. Trying to say that this proves polygamy is good or something. And also, a quick Google search immediately brings up a fact check that's like, um, no, that's not true. In the first few episodes of season five, the Merrifields are still giving us this, oh, we're so victimized by Roberta. Oh, we're so hurt by what Roberta did to us. At one point, they pull out a shutterfly printed pillow of Garrick in a cowboy hat with Danielle and Roberta on either side of him. And it's supposed to be this sad moment because I guess grandpa gave it to her. But I am just like, what the f is this picture? How sweet of him. He really loved Roberta. It was hard after she didn't come. <laughs> I was gonna f Roberta on this pillow. <sighs> Uh, 
fields take like four seconds to move on from Roberta, and we are quickly introduced to Roberta number two. When they start showing pictures of Natalia, I'm like, of course it's a 26 year old. In a couple seasons, they're gonna be like, this is our 18 year old mail order bride, Anastasia. She really loves us and we're not taking advantage of her at all. Like Roberta, Natalia is a bombshell Brazilian who doesn't speak any English. I'm sure this will all work out very well for them and they aren't repeating the season three and four storyline at all. You know, God came and met me and Danielle one day in the garage. I asked God, should Natalia be a wife? And like a little, like a wind and presence of God just filled the whole garage. And, and we just knew like God met me and her there like to witness to us both that, you know, that it was serious. You know, me and Danielle were out in the garage, you know, and Danielle opened the garage door and I was like, wow, what is that? And she was like, it's wind. And I was like, shh. And, and I was like, whoa, did you feel that? And she was like, it's wind. And I was like, shut up, Danielle. I, I had just asked myself before you opened the garage door, God, if you want us to be with Natalia, blow me. And Danielle, you're a witness to it. I think it was the witch. Shut up, Danielle. What? Like, what is going through Danielle's head? <laughs> the Merrifields pack their bags and head back to Mexico for a first time meetup with Roberta number two. Nurse for this trip. What if Garrick likes her and I don't? You know exactly what's gonna happen if you don't like her and Garrick does. That girl could shave your eyebrows off in the middle of the night and Garrick would still propose. Then we get this bullshit segment from Danielle about how distraught their two boys were with Roberta leaving. And like, I'm sorry, are we supposed to be blaming Roberta for you putting your children through this mess? You are the ones that choose to drag your children halfway across the globe every year to meet daddy's next victim. Ma'am, you're treating your family like a Girls Gone Wild audition for Garrick's penis, okay? Telling them every year, oh, this is gonna be your new mommy. Oh wait, no, this is gonna be your new mommy. Oh wait, you're gonna have five new mommies. Like, Roberta's not doing that. You and Garrick are the ones doing that. When Roberta number two finally makes it to Mexico, Things don't start off amazing. Natalia is having a little bit of a hard time I'm trying to enjoy the moment as much as possible. Danielle spends their whole first day together complaining about what a buzzkill Natalia is. I don't feel as close to Natalia as I did with Roberta. The adventure did not really go as planned. I was bummed. It's supposed to be kind of a cool experience, so it kind of did bum me out a little bit. I want you to know. Stop here to remind how do you feel? A little bit overwhelmed. It's scary because her bird up hurt us bad. Garrick's gonna propose and I'm gonna give her a sister necklace and you know Roberta took all those things. They bust her doing makeup and Danielle's like, yeah well, you know, Roberta didn't follow through on her promises to us and she said she was my sister! Oh, she lied. She lied. <laughs> now I have to redo my makeup. <laughs> We get Garrick and Confessional in a black wife beater. Oh, God, give me a break with the wife beaters. And he reveals that God told him he would get more than just Danielle. Oof, that's gotta hurt if you're her. And that he would have as many as five wives. That's what he saw in a vision. Him with five women. He sweat, he wet. Gotta go on like a turbo vet. I can't take this guy serious anymore. Like, dude, you can't even get one. You think you're gonna get four women to agree to come live with you on a Colorado compound and suck your group? At the end of episode four, we get this very juicy scene in the kitchen of their rented villa, with the three of them having an argument about Garrick's dating app profiles. Apparently, Garrick had told Natalia he wasn't looking for a new wife anymore. Oh my god. Sweet, sweet angel Natalia, you actually believed that? Oh my god. Eu me surpreendi quando eu peguei o celular dele pra usar o tradutor e eu vi o aplicativo. Profile on there. Oh, gee. They can see no. your profile. But they can't message. Yeah. And Garrick's like, oh, oh, Natalia, I actually forgot to tell you that the other day, you know, God actually uh, spoke to me. Uh, spoke to me through a fart that came out of my bottle and told me. He wanted me to keep staying on the dating app. It was like, and instantly I knew, you know, that's God. Garrick is lying out his ass. Danielle ain't helping him anytime soon. And his response? Just make dinner, like. How dare you? I wish these would stop complaining and just make me dinner. Then 
when Garrett tries to play his, oh, I'm just doing what God told me to do thing, Danielle snaps, and it is glorious. I wasn't even getting on there. You worry you search on your own time. That's a lie. No, I don't. But I don't go on there. You didn't look at new people? No. That's a lie. This is by far my favorite Danielle indignant. Oh, really? Oh, really, Garrick? Danielle, I f love it. You didn't do that thing, that thing that I saw you literally do, Garrick? Oh, really? Like I'm not married to a wannabe cult leader, Garrick? Okay. There are two more new couples being introduced to Seeking Sister Wife this season. The Ryans and the Saludans. The Saludans are a Muslim couple looking for, you guessed it, their first sister wife. This is yet another couple still on the JV squad of polygamy. Another couple that hasn't found their second wife yet, but is looking. Thankfully, the Saludans come with Jamila, Naeem's mother, who is Hilarious. Name is Jeremy to me. I don't like it. I'm mean, just my opinion. I'm just telling her. Uh -huh. I noticed that with extra support from me and um, positive affirmation, words of affirmation, and girl, you can get some books and some signs and put them up. Yes, but the more love to go around. Girl, get a dog, cat. There you go. Again. <laughs> and unlike the timid brother and sister-in-law of the Merrifields. Jamila is not afraid to give her opinion. I met her online. Oh, Lord. I do see the benefit in it. You see the benefit in it. I mean, aside from the fact that... Jamila, she's like, what, were you worried he wouldn't see the upside and f***ing other women? We haven't gotten to see a whole lot of the Saludans in the first four episodes, but in the previews, it looks like we are in for some future fireworks. The Ryans come to us in episode three as an awkward monogamous couple that grew up in polygamy as kids and decided after 20 years of marriage, they wanted to look for a sister wife. How you ask? By scoping out single chicks in a empty bar in the middle of the afternoon, they somehow stumble upon this cute young woman at the end of the bar. And I'm like, plant, plant, it's a production plant. There's no way, there is no way this isn't a production plant. Because by the end of the episode, she actually agrees to go out with them. I believe in miracles. By episode four, we find the Ryans drinking very large coffee-like beverages in Care Bear Cafe, and she no-shows. The Ryans completely make up this lie that she was somehow this close to marrying them. Here's another girl that is gung-ho about wanting to meet us and then That thinks out. about it. Would you be interested in dating my husband? I'm gonna be totally honest, the thought of sharing somebody is really scary. It's like a step up from Swinger, right? Becky's connection to what I've read online is a criminal cult led by her stepfather, including child brides and trafficking. The Ryan's whole vibe just puts me off. Like they're acting like they're these victims of society. Desiree has the same kind of excuse we've always heard. When we were with Stephanie, she had the same problems with it. It's very confusing. It's an emotional roller coaster. Some of the frustrations of it. Oh, this is just like when Stephanie wouldn't commit because society put all this pressure on her. And then at the end of the scene where they've just spent 20 minutes about how they can't coerce a woman into being with them, the husband's like, whatever, I guess I'll f you. Let's go chill out. Okay. At the end of the day, the only thing to do, love the ones we have, I've got Becky. <laughs> Sister Wife, season five, episodes one through four. Let me know in the comments if you want me to keep covering this show and make sure you subscribe so you stay up to date on all of my latest videos.